Constantine to play in laboratory exercise. This exercise has been designed to teach you about using Newton's second law, so adding forces. During the exercise, you're going to need to resolve forces into components parallel to the slope and perpendicular to the slope. It's going to teach you about friction. The aim of this experiment is to measure the coefficient of static friction between a box here and a slope. You're also going to consider conservative and non-conservative forces and the difference between these two things. Let's start by considering all the forces acting in the experimental setup that you're going to be using. You're going to have a cart and a box on a plane and they'll be connected via a string over a pulley to a hanging mass. Let's start by considering all the forces which are acting on this hanging mass. So we'll choose different colours for our different masses. So here's our hanging mass. Let's give this a symbol little m and we'll make it the green mass. Now, Newton's second law tells us that the mass times the acceleration of this little mass is equal to the total force acting on this hanging mass. So let's consider what forces are acting on this hanging mass. Well, we've got gravitational force, which is pulling it downwards. So that's the weight force, and it is equal to mg where M is the green mass. The only other force that is acting on this hanging mass is the tension in the string. So here's the tension. It's trying to pull the, for the mass upwards. So it's acting in the opposite direction to the weight force, which is acting downwards. So the acceleration times the mass of this little hanging mass is equal to the weight force minus the tension. So that wasn't too bad, and that's our formula describing all the forces acting on this hanging mass. Now let's consider all the forces acting on the box and the cart. Let's call capital M the mass of the box and the cart combined. So capital M is equal to the mass of the box plus the mass of the cart. Okay, so we know that the acceleration times the mass of this system, so we're considering it as a system, MA is equal to the total force acting on the cart and the box. So now we need to consider all the forces that are acting. The tension force is going to be pulling it up the slope. So we're, we were assuming here that this hanging mass was moving downwards. So we'll assume these, the box and the cart are moving upwards. So we've got the tension acting up the slope like this. Now we've also got the weight force of the box and the cart pulling them down the slope. So what we're going to need to do is work out how much of that weight force is actually acting down the slope because it's only the component down the slope that we need to include here. So here's our weight force. It's acting downwards. And what we need to do is resolve this weight force into its two components. We've got a component parallel to the slope, and then we've got a component perpendicular to the slope. So these two are perpendicular to each other. That's 90 degrees there. And if this angle in here is theta, this angle down here is theta as well. Make sure that you can do a geometric proof that these two angle thetas are the same, remembering that this vector and the slope are parallel and this vector is perpendicular to that slope. So this here is the component of the weight force acting down the slope. And just from simple trigonometry, you can see if this is mg, then this weight force going down the slope, this one is equal to mg sine theta. Once again, make sure that you can prove that to yourself. So we've got minus mg sine theta. As the tension is acting up the slope, this is the weight force is acting down the slope, so they've got opposite signs. Now there's one other force that we need to consider, friction. The friction is going to act to resist the motion. So we've made the assumption that this cart is going to be moving up the slope, which means that our frictional force is acting down the slope. 
So now we need to take into account that frictional force. The frictional force is going to be concentrated between the bottom of your box, has a nice furry bottom, and the slope. These trolleys are designed to have very little friction. So we can ignore the friction between the trolley and the slope as it is very small compared to the friction between our box and our slope. So we know that the frictional force of anything, force due to friction, is equal to, we've got our coefficient of static or kinetic friction. In this case, the box is moving, so it's kinetic friction. So we've got mu k times the normal force. So the normal force is the force which is pushing this box down onto the slope, which is this force here. It's the weight component perpendicular to the slope. That's what's pushing down on it. So the weight force here perpendicular to the slope from trigonometry is given by mg cos theta. And so our frictional force will be equal to mu k times mg cos theta. Now just one other thing that we need to be a bit careful of. We're assuming that all the friction is between the box and the slope, not between the cart and the slope. So the m in this case is just the mass of the box. The mass of the cart isn't adding to the friction between the box and the slope. So instead of just m here, we'll have m box. Because the capital M, remember, is the sum of the two. OK, so we've got minus. Now let's put the, we've got mu k. And now let's let this one have the red mass. So we'll call this m box. We'll just need to erase this to make a little bit of extra room times g cos theta. So what we've got now is two equations that describe the acceleration of this system. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to work out the acceleration up the slope. So to do that, we need to realise the box and cart and the hanging mass have to have the same acceleration. They're tied together, they're moving together, so the acceleration is the same. So let's call this first equation describing the hanging mass equation one, and this second equation describing the box and the cart equation two. Now, to solve them simultaneously, we can just add these two together. We've got a minus the tension here and the tension here. These tensions are the same as we're assuming that this is a very light pulley with no moment of inertia. Later in the course you'll learn how to cope with if this was a heavy pulley what you'd have to do. But for now we can make the assumption that the tension is the same on both sides of the pulley. And so what we'll do is we'll add these two equations together to work out our acceleration. So we've got little m a plus big m a is equal to We've got mg, now we've got a minus t and then a plus t, so we won't bother writing those down. And then we've got minus mg sine theta minus mu k m box g cos theta. And now what we're trying to do is solve it for the acceleration. So we can pull the acceleration out as a common factor here. So we can put acceleration out the front brackets there and now we just have to divide by the hanging mass plus the mass of the box plus the cart to get our acceleration. So our acceleration is equal to mg minus capital MG sine theta minus mu k m box g cos theta all over little m plus big M. Now this was the acceleration assuming that the cart was moving up the slope. So in your lab manual, this acceleration is given the little subscript A. So this is how we derive that equation in your lab manual. Now you should make sure that you can derive the equation for the case where the box is moving down the slope. In that case, the box is moving down the slope and the friction is acting up the slope as the friction always acts to oppose the movement of that box. Now you're ready to do the experiment, so let's now move and look at the experimental setup. 
This is the first experiment for which you'll be using the Lab Pro. You'll be using the Lab Pro for a lot of experiments this session. The Lab Pro is a way to connect different sensors to the computer so that your computer can read the data coming from the different sensors. So when you plug in the Lab Pro, there's always three cores that you need to connect to it. You're always going to need to give it power, so make sure that you plug the power into it. There's a little power spot here where you put the power in and then turn the power on. Next, you'll need to connect the Lab Pro to the computer. To do that, you're going to need to use a USB cord. The USB port goes into the back of the computer and into the Lab Pro, you've got a little end with a kind of square with the two corners cut off. Now, note with this, it's not obvious, but the side with the picture goes downwards. So just be careful with that. Please don't force it because if you force it, you'll break it. The picture goes downwards, which is counterintuitive. So you put that in there and then you connect the USB port to the back of the computer. So, in the back of your computer, you've got three USB ports along here. You'll have the keyboard and the mouse already plugged in, and you can plug the Logger Pro into the third USB port, like that. Okay, finally, we need to connect the Lab Pro to the sensor that we're going to be using. In this case, we're going to be using a motion sensor. This motion sensor works by sending out little sound pulses. You'll hear like t -t 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 as it's turned on, and then it records the reflection of that sound when it comes back. So this motion sensor works between about 15 centimeters away from the motion sensor to six meters away. So as it's recording the reflections, it's very important that your workspace is clear and that there aren't people or objects moving in the field of view of your motion sensor. Because if you move objects and things in that field of view, the motion sensor will detect those objects instead of the car and the box, which is what you're trying to detect. So let's connect this motion sensor to our Lab Pro. To do that, you put the cable into the Digisonic outlet of the motion sensor. You then connect it to the Digisonic outlet of the Lab Pro doesn't actually matter if you connect it to one or two, but let's connect it to one. Okay, and now your Lab Pro should be set up to start connecting, collecting data. So what we're going to do is we're now going to open up the software which starts this Lab Pro working. So on the dock down the bottom of your screen, there's an icon which is actually vernier calipers in front of a graph. And if you move the mouse over that, it says Logger Pro. So that's the software that we need to read the data from this motion sensor. So let's open that up. It's intelligent software. It should work out what sensor is connected to your Lab Pro. And the green light on your Lab Pro will go on to indicate that it's working and collecting the data. So on the screen, you should now have two graphs. You're going to have a position versus time graph and a velocity versus time graph. Now what we need to do is tell the computer how many readings it needs to take each second. So to do that, from the menu bar up the top, select experiment, go down to data collection, which is here, and then at the moment it's collecting 20 samples each second, we're going to change that number to 30. Now you should hear the slow clicking sound that it's making. When we start collecting, that clicking sound's going to go much faster. So just to show you how we'll do that, when you're ready to start collecting data, you're going to hit the collect button up here. It's a green button with a white triangle in it. We hit that, this starts clicking faster and we get a graph on the computer. Okay, we'll now look at how we need to set up the equipment on the bench to get the measurements. The equipment you'll be using for this experiment, first of all the motion sensor that we've already discussed, you're going to have a box and you're going to place your unknown mass inside the box. 
Now, one of the aims of this experiment is for you to work out the mass of this box. You also have your cart. The cart weighs around about 500 grams. Feel free to go weigh your cart to work out exactly what the weight of your cart is. You'll have a string connecting the cart to a hanging mass and you'll have a set of hanging masses. You'll need to use two of these mass carriers to get the cart to accelerate up the slope. You've got a slope which is connected to a retort stand which allows you to adjust the angle of that slope. Now it's very important that you do not change this angle during the experiment. So before you start, make sure that you have got an appropriate angle. I'll show you how to do that now. The important thing is that your box and cart need to be able to accelerate up the slope. They also need to be able to accelerate down the slope with the range of masses that you have. So let's just make sure I've set the angle now to six degrees. You'll be using the protractor to measure the angle. So to measure the angle, I just make sure that the bottom of the protractor is flush with the bottom of the slope so that they're definitely parallel. And then the little plumb bob tells me the angle. So here I can see that it's six degrees. And this will read with a half degree accuracy. So it's six plus or minus half a degree. Now that should be approximately right but because of the different wear and tear on different sets of equipment, you might need a slightly different angle. What we'll do now is we'll check that this angle is appropriate for my equipment. Okay, so first of all, we'll check that with my range of masses, I can get this cart to move out the slope. At the moment, it's stationary. So let's add some extra mass. We'll have two mass carriers on the mass here. It's accelerating up the slope, so that's good. What we need to do now is make sure that if we just have one mass carrier on, we can get it to move down the slope. Okay, so we want it to move down the slope with around about 40 grams of mass on this mass carrier, because that will allow us to take quite a few measurements of the acceleration down the slope. So remember the mass carriers each have a mass of 5 grams, so you'll need to add that on to your total hanging mass. Okay, so now we've got 40 grams on that mass carrier, it's not moving down the slope. So let's just increase the angle a little bit. Okay, so I now have an angle of 9 degrees and my cart can now move down the slope. Let's just make sure that it can move up the slope as well if I put extra mats on. Okay, and I can get it to move up the slope. So I'm now happy with this angle and we'll go ahead with the experiment with an angle of nine degrees. Now it's very important that you do this experiment with a partner. So if you don't have a partner, contact your demonstrator and ask them to find one for you because we don't want the cart and the box to go flying off the end that can break the car and it'll make the experiment take a lot longer for you. So make sure that one member of your team is standing at the end of the cart, ready to stop the cart before the cart hits the pulley. Now with my setup, I've got 290 grams on the end here. I've got two, two mass carriers, which each weigh five grams, so that's 10 grams. I've got four 20 gram masses, so that's another 80 grams and I've got two 100 gram masses on one of the mass carriers. So we've got 290 grams, and when I let go, the cart travels very slowly up the slope. Now we're not going to get very good measurements for an acceleration as slow as this. You'll want to add about 20 grams on to the mass for which your cart goes very slowly up the slope. 
So we, in this case, are going to start with 310 grams. And we can see it's now moving up the slope at a reasonable rate. So for the first mass that we use, we're going to take three measurements. And we're going to use these three measurements to calculate the uncertainty in our acceleration. We can then assume from that point on that all the accelerations have that same percentage uncertainty. So you, when you're ready to collect the data, press collect on your Logger Pro program. And when you start hitting the clicks, let go. Make sure your partner stops the car at the end of the track. You're now ready to analyse the data. So we're going to zoom in on the screen now to show you how to do that. Okay, so at present this data is very hard to read. What you want to do is hit the auto scale button, which is the button with a big A on it, which will zoom in on the interesting data. Now, what you can see is initially the position wasn't changing. So this was before I let go of the cart. Then when I let go of the cart, there's this sudden increase here. Now that doesn't mean anything physically. It's just remember the motion sensor only starts working when objects are 15 centimetres away. We started with the box up flush against the motion sensor. So until it got to 15 centimetres away, it wasn't going to record the data properly. So this is the part of the graph that we're actually interested in. So to tell the computer that, we highlight this part of the graph. And this is a velocity time graph. What we are interested in is the acceleration up the slope. An acceleration is given by the gradient of a velocity time graph. So to find out this gradient, you're going to want to click on your linear fit tool. So click on the linear fit and it tells me that the slope is 0 0.01936 metres per second per second. So that is the acceleration. So what you're going to do is you're going to write that down in your table. You're then going to repeat this measurement two times. The value should be fairly close. If you have a percentage error of more than 15%, something is going wrong. If you can't work out what it is, contact your demonstrator and get them to help. So take this measurement another two times. Then you want to increase your mass on your hanging mass carriers in increments of 10 grams. Make sure that your partner is ready to stop the car at the end of the track because as the mass goes up, the acceleration will go up and the car will go faster and faster. Once you've completed that table, you're ready to start measuring the acceleration of the cart down the slope. So to do that, you only need the one mass carrier with around about 40 grams on it. You want it to move down the slope slowly. It's possible that you'll need to decrease these masses in increments of five grams so that you can get enough measurements to measure the acceleration down the slope. So measure the first acceleration down the slope three times and you can then use the percentage uncertainty there as the percentage uncertainty for all the accelerations down the slope. If you have any problems getting the equipment to work, it's important that you contact the demonstrator early so that they can help you get the equipment set up so that you're not wasting time trying to set up the equipment. So if there's any problems, ask your demonstrator. Now you've finished collecting the data, it's time to use the computer to analyse what you've got. So to do that, we're going to use a straight line graph in Excel. So shrink down your Logger Pro program and under the Experiments folder, you'll want to open up the Cart on an Inclined Plane graph Excel file. This template is set up to fit two straight lines to your data. One for the cart moving down, for which all your acceleration should be negative, and one for the cart moving up the plane, which is going to have positive acceleration. Now, by using good Excel skills, you can actually save yourself some time in this lab because you need to record the uncertainties for all the data in your experiment. But you can actually use Excel to calculate these uncertainties if you're a bit clever about it. So, what you'll need to do is enter in your masses into the left-hand column here. 
Now you'll notice in the front of the experiment, in the list of equipment, it tells you that the uncertainty in all of these masses is 2.5%. So you can get Excel to calculate the uncertainties in these masses, which is this error column here. We can just tell it that this is equal to 0 0.025 times this value here. And then if we just copy this down, that tells us the error in each of those masses. So you can just copy those values into your lab manual as the uncertainty in your mass. Now you'll need to enter all your accelerations up the slope here. Enter your first value. You'll need to calculate the uncertainty in this value. For this value, you took three measurements. To get the uncertainty, you do the range, which is the biggest minus the smallest, and then you divide this by two. This gives you the total uncertainty. To get the percentage uncertainty, you then divide that total uncertainty by the average value. So when I did that, I ended up with an error of 11.3%. And we said that we can assume that error is the same for all these values. So what I can do is enter in my, the values that I measured for the acceleration. I can then get the computer to calculate the errors for me. I can go that the error is equal to the value in this column times my percentage error, which was 11.3%, so that's times 0 0.113. And then just copying that formula down, I've now calculated all my uncertainties. So I can now write these uncertainties into my lab manual. Now you'll want to do the same for the accelerations down the slope. Enter the masses that you use, have the Excel calculate the uncertainties, and then enter the accelerations, calculate the percentage uncertainty yourself for the first one, and then have Excel calculate it for the rest. Once you've done that, Excel is going to tell you the formulas for your two lines of best fit and also the lines of worst fit for your acceleration up and down the slope. And you're going to use these formulas to work out your value for the coefficient of kinetic friction and also for the mass of that box. So what you'll actually need to use is the gradient. So remember y is equal to mx plus b. The gradient is the number in front of the x. You can get the uncertainty in that gradient by using the range on 2 of the two lines of worst fit. So start by getting your gradient and then work out the uncertainty in the gradient. You can then use these gradients. Remember the gradient here, the gradient for the A plus, the line of best fit, is equal to DA plus DM. That's the symbol it's given in your lab book. So you can then add the, these two gradients together and use that to calculate the mass of the box. And when you subtract these gradients from each other, you'll, end, you'll be able to use that value to calculate your coefficient of kinetic friction. Make sure that you know, going into the lab, how to deal with these uncertainties. Remember, when you add values, you add the absolute uncertainties. And when you multiply numbers together, you add the percentage uncertainties. Okay, so you've now got all the information you need to finish the lab. If there's anything that you don't understand, make sure that you talk to the demonstrator and talk to them sooner rather than later, as it is a little bit challenging getting through all this material in two hours. If you're properly prepared and you've had a think before you enter the lab about how to do the calculations and what measurements you'll need, it shouldn't be hard to finish this in two hours. But if you come in completely unprepared, then you are going to struggle getting this completed within the time frame.